The first program that we're going to look at is called Scriva, and it is an editing environment for composing scores. As you can see, the program is capable of notating music in common music notation, thereby giving composers familiar ground in which to begin their experience with the computer. The screen is broken down into two major regions. The upper region here contains the information which is actually being edited, that is, the music. As we come down to the lower part of the screen, however, we see information which concerns the actual editing environment. We can start immediately with an example, that of play. I'll point to the play button, press the cursor switch, and we will hear what is currently in front of us. One of the more interesting features of this program is its flexibility in allowing the musical material to be notated in several different ways. To change the notation, I just probe the notation switch and I get a small menu which lists the alternatives. We are currently using common music notation. I'll select piano roll. The reason for the name is obvious. The music is notated in much in the same way as the roll that goes through a player piano. What's interesting is that this form of notation lets me view the temporal characteristics of the score in a manner different than common music notation and in a way which is often musically useful and relevant. The reason we want this type of notational flexibility is that the musical data is highly multidimensional. And if we try and display all attributes of notes at the same time, our screen will just be totally cluttered. The way around this is to change the notation to highlight certain features at the expense of others. What features we choose to highlight would depend on the type of operation which we want to perform on the data. Let's take an example of changing the amplitude of some of the notes. The first thing we'll do is change the notation to a notation which highlights that feature, amplitude. We now see that the notes are notated such that they are drawn as functions of amplitude over time, but placed in pitch on the musical stave. This note, for example, has a sharp attack stays loud for a while and then falls off, whereas this note over to the right has a much slower attack. The key thing here is that the absolute height of the function is directly proportional to the amplitude of the sound. Now, if I'd like to change the amplitude of one or more notes, the first step is simply to specify what the new value will be. I'll choose 255. The next thing to do is to identify what notes I want to change. Let's select this note right here. I'll point to it, depress the button, and the program responds by showing that it did understand my command. I'll then come down to the operator, set volume, and when I depress the button, watch the envelope change shape. As I increase the amplitude, the envelope grew. That's fine for one note at a time, but what if I want to change the amplitude of, say, three notes, these three in the upper part of the screen? The program provides for this eventuality as well, using the scope operator. One technique which I can use is called circling. I probe the circle button, and then I simply draw a line around the notes in question. When I'm finished drawing, the notes are highlighted, and now I'll come down and set the volume again and watch how the envelopes are updated. The scope remains in effect until I change it, and it remains in effect for all operators. So if I move to play, I will only hear the three notes whose amplitude I just adjusted. The concept of scope in any editing environment is extremely important. It allows the designer to chunk together groups of information which are to be treated in a similar manner and allows what is often takes several operations to be performed in a single gesture.